just be the vessel fill me up until I overflow God I want to overflow with you in my life God if I do nothing else my whole desire and purpose is to give you glory hi guys um, this week's sermon is being done a day early just simply because I feel the Lord so powerfully speaking. Um, it's called it it's called it's in the it's all in the whisper. Um, and it's basically about hearing the voice of God. And I received two confirmations from the Lord from two different sermons that this is what he wants to speak. Um, if you're, if you've been a Christian for any length of time, you would hear, uh, sermons about hearing God's voice and how to hear the voice of God and it would be all very mystical and very spiritual, spiritual. Um, I'm going to take a very, um, spiritual approach, but very practical approach. Um, for me, hearing the voice of God has always been uh, very natural because um, ever since I was a little girl, I spent a lot of time alone with God and meditating on His Word and really understanding how He speaks to me and developing my relationship with God. A lot of people, um, they want to hear God, but they don't develop the relationship. So 
So I would say step number one to hearing God is is developing the relationship with God. And when you develop the relationship with God, you'll realize how He speaks to you. And how God speaks to you is not necessarily how He would speak, speak to me. He will always use the basis of His his word, but it will always have a different um, way of coming across. I'm a very creative person, as most of you know, and God often speaks to me um, through film or through um, through other creative movie um, things like through music and through movies. So. I might see something in a movie that will spawn uh, a creative idea. I might hear something in a song that might spark, spark a certain idea or cause God to speak to me about something in my life. Um, so that's how he speaks to me. And when you, when you develop your God voice, and you'll see him speaking everywhere. The first way to develop the voice of God is to is to read the word of God. Because he will never say anything outside of his word. He will never ever say anything outside of his word. And when you know when you know the voice of God. When you know the word of God, you can test if the voice of God is truly real or not. Because there are several voices speaking at the same time. Um, there, there are three main voices speaking. Uh, the, vo the voice of God, which is the divine voice. Uh, your voice, which is the human voice, and the voice of the devil or the evil one or Satan. So these three voices are constantly battling for your attention. And in order to differentiate um, between God's voice, your voice, and the voice of the enemy, you need to soak yourself in the word. There are several ways to do this. Like nowadays, um, the word is so easily accessible. Um, the most reliable website I found for the word, of, the most, uh, one of the greatest websites I found as a resource for the word of God is BibleGateway.com. Um, so I I mentioned this in that video a few weeks back. I mentioned uh, BibleGateway.com in I think a few weeks back. And it's an amazing resource. It has all kinds of Bibles on there. And all kinds of stuff on there to help you. When you get the word of God in you, you'd be surprised how quickly the voice of God gets st stored up. Because without the word, there's nothing there to draw on. But with the word inside of you, there is something there to draw on. And after you get the word inside of you, it is easier to hear the voice of God. And I always found the easiest, another, another simple way to check how God speaks to you and to develop your relationship with God after um, soaking in his word and whatever is test the spirit. So what I like to tell people to do is get a, a, a God voice notebook. 
right down a s simple questions um, and then ask God and see what he says and then write the answer down. When you write something down, it codifies it and it sticks in your memory and you have a log. And you'd be surprised how these these questions um, and you asking God these questions develop your relationship with God. See, a relationship with God takes work just like any other relationship. A lot of people think a relationship with God is just opening up the Bible and praying in the day or at night or sometimes at work or at school or whatever. But developing a relationship with God is a conscious choice. It, the gift of salvation is free, but developing the relationship with God is costly. It will, it will cost you a lot, but it will be so worth it because then you'll you'll have a guy that will that will be with you through everything that will love you through everything that will that will make make decision making easier i i'm not saying that developing a relationship with god will make everything hunky dory it won't but it will make it, when the trial comes, it will make it easier to go to God and say, Lord, I'm having this issue. And it'll, and it'll make it easier to know when he's speaking to you. He's dying to speak to you. And I think we have, we have so many other voices speaking to us. We have Siri speaking to us. We have Alexa speaking to us. We have all these um, GPS voices speaking to us. That it blocks out the voice of God. We have so much noise. And we just need to quiet our minds and meditate on God and His voice. Meditation is often seen to be a Middle Eastern truth. Um, n not Middle Eastern, um, like a mi Middle Eastern religion kind, kind of, um, thing, but actually meditation is not, it comes from the Word of God, he says, um, meditate on the word day and night. We are supposed to think about the word. When you, when you are developing your relationship with God, take time every day, even if it's 10 minutes, to just ask him questions to do, and listen for his answers. We sometimes think, that the relationship with God only requires us talking in the yard to do what we want. But our relationship with God also requires listening. Listening for His voice. Listening for the whispers. Listening for the, for the little prompts in our day. Because He's so... God so wants to speak to you, but, but he has a hard time getting in because your listening ear is not prepared. So the next time you pray or talk to God, take your notebook that I was talking about and write down his answers. Listen for his spirit. Listen for the still small voice. And he gives you 
he he will give you uh, little God winks throughout the day to let you know that that's me. And all we need to do is listen. He, the, this is what the two preachers said that I was hearing. He often doesn't come with a big, loud, booming, bur burning bush kind of thing. He often comes like he did for, I think it was Elijah in the still small voice. And he wants us to develop um, our senses to listen to that still small voice when it says, don't go in there. Don't be with that person. Don't get in relationship with that person. Don't do this or 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 go over and give that person encouragement. Go over and sow this into your pastor's life or whatever it is. He's speaking and he desperately wants to speak to you. Um, but but your ears are closed to what he's saying. Or sometimes I know with me, sometimes it's I don't I think I know better or I think I'm crazy and I don't trust myself that I hear God. So when I hear something sometimes I'm like, That cannot be God, that's just me and my doubt. Um, one time, I know that I, I was sitting in my bedroom and there was a, there's a wall, ne there's a little wall next to the sink in the kitchen and I was staring at that and staring at that and I was like, um, I'll, I'll just put a dish in the sink because there was a dish on my tray that I wanted to just do it myself and put it in the sink and God said don't go near the sink don't go near the sink wait until someone can help you and um, I said oh no that's not God I'll be fine I, I did it before I went near the sink and my head rests Went, went totally um, wrong and, and it took them a couple weeks to fix it. Then if I had listened to God, I wouldn't have gotten myself in that predicament for a couple weeks. And for me, it's not often that I don't trust God. I trust God. But it's often that I don't trust myself that I hear God. I think it's just me when it is God. So God said and saying to me, um, remove the doubt, it is me. It is me, it's not you. Just remove the doubt and trust yourself that you do hear me that you are worthy for me to be speaking to. What God is saying right now is that there are people out there listening to me right now that don't think they're worthy enough for God to be speaking to. Um, they think they have to be a preacher or someone big or, you know, whatever. Um, and he's saying, no. He's saying, I want to speak to you how to raise your children. He's saying, I want to speak to you on how to um, best pass that class. I want to speak, I want to give you strategy on how to do this and that. And you're not too little for me to speak to. You're not worthless. I want to speak to you. I want to communicate with you. And then you have the other side of people who think everything is a word from God. And what he wants to say to those people 
is to be careful. Be careful what you say on his behalf. Because if you say something on his behalf and it's not him, and you're using it to manipulate people, he, he's saying that he has a problem with that and he will and he will and he sees what you're trying to do to people and he and he will judge appropriately now i'm not a gloom, a gloom and doom pre preacher but he's saying be very careful what you say is a word from god and it comes from you because he said he does not like and he will not tolerate being made a fool of. Because there are a lot of people who said, oh, I have a word from God for you. I have a word from God for, for your life and for your whatever. And, some, and often that's true. But quite often, it is not true. It's just people trying to um, think of themselves bigger than they ought to think. And he's saying to those people, be careful. I see and I will repay accordingly. And he's also saying that whatsoever you sow, that will you also reap. So if you are hearing from God, legitimately hearing from God, and sowing what he tells you to sow, you will reap bountiful blessings. If you're just saying you hear from God to look like someone uh, greater to look like someone big to get money to get power and prestige if you're using his name like that he's saying he will repay appropriately thank you Lord cause us to hear you more clearly cause us to love you more dearly and, sweet, and sweetly we love you we worship you we praise you God we honor you. Fill us now with your word, Lord God. Strengthen our ears. Cause people this week to really hear you in, in the in the still small voice, in the little stuff, Lord. Make your whisper loud and clear. Make the answers to our lives loud and clear, God. Make it loud and clear, God. Make your voice distinguishable from all the loud noise and all the loud stuff we hear, oh God. Present yourself, oh God, in a new way for us this week. We worship you and love you. In the name of Jesus. Bring me a word from you, Lord. Just one word from you, Lord. Just one word from you, Lord. We need a word from you, Lord God. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord, to our weeks. Speak, Lord, to our doubts. Speak to our pain. Speak to our fear. Just speak, Lord. We need you to speak in such a special and powerful way, Lord. We bless you. Yeah. Okay, guys. I'll see you next week. Have a good night. Good morning. Good time wherever you are.
I love you. Bye. Be blessed. Until next week.